Well, good evening, and we're glad that you tuned in today for another Wednesday Word. Um, hope your week's going well, and uh, pray that today's Word would be an encouragement to you. Uh, we started uh, last Wednesday that I met with you on a, a little two-part series. We started last week, and we'll finish it up uh, today on an artist rendition of a believer. Uh, we looked at uh, Ephesians 4, uh, 17 through 32. Uh, we got up to, we're going to start on verse 25 today, and uh, we kind of likened it if uh, a person gave a description of a believer and how they should look. And you know, those people that do the artist renditions when people say, uh, uh, they're describing somebody that was, you know, a, a thief, a robber, and they said, what he looked like? And then the artist kind of sketches it out. Well, uh, this would be an artist rendition of a believer. And uh, so if you got your Bibles, uh, open up to Ephesians 4.25. I'll bring you up to where we are. These are the first uh, four things. We're either taking off something on the artwork, you know, like the nose is too wide and the face is uh, too narrow there and then whatever, uh, as we make this picture come alive. Uh, the first one was to take off worldly thinking. The second was, was take off the callous heart. The third one was take off moral impurity. And the fourth one is to take off the old mind and put on the new mind. And so now we're on the fifth characteristic as we look at this passage. But let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you'd speak to us, Lord, a word for each of us today through your word, Lord, as we, uh, God, we don't need to hear a word from somebody, but from you, from your word. So Lord, speak to us today through your word, and God may be, for, be forever changed with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the uh, fifth part on that is to take off lies and put on the truth. It says in verse 25, Therefore, lying aside falsehood, speak truth each one of you with his neighbor so that all members of one another. And so lying, you know, <clears throat> they say, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about the Satan is the father of lies. I mean, he started out lying. He, 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 he lied to Eve, you know, hath God said. He knew what God said. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's, he, he, his, his mode of operation is deceptive. So he's, he's the father of lies. And so we don't need to lie. We're of our father God, who's truth. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And so for us in our way, we need to always be speaking the truth. You know, some people say, well, I was only deceiving a little bit. Well, that's not what we need to do. Uh, it, talks, it talks about even there amongst the believers. You know, we're the body of Christ. What if one body part tried to lie to another? And what if the head told the hand, hey, that, that, that's not hot right there. And then you put your hand on it, it's hot. You know, we don't want to deceive. We want to be honest and open in every one of our relationships because lying destroys relationship. It, it's, it's a sin and it uh, brings destruction. So we always tell that we should tell the truth. The, the sixth one is, is take off anger. That picture should not have anger in it. That artist rendition should take anger off of it because in 26 it says, be angry and do not sin and do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. You know, now, first of all, being angry is not a sin because it says, be angry and do not sin. Because, you know, you say, well, I don't get angry. Well, that's, remember we just said, don't lie. We all get angry. That's an emotion. Uh, but that's not necessarily a sin. When we have the emotion, it's what we do with it, how we respond, how we react, you know, either in the wrong words or the wrong actions or the wrong attitude. That's where we enter into sin uh, because that emotion of anger uh, can boil up in all of us. But what we do with it either becomes good or bad. And when we let it go too long, let the sun go down on our wrath. Remember, uh, Jesus even said, Matthew 5, 25, make friends quickly with your opponent at the law while you are with, where you're with him on the way. In other words, do it quickly. Don't let the sun go down. Take care of matters when you can. Take care of issues when you can. And don't let anger just keep building up because the more anger builds up, then you are going to have uh, more likely to have wrong words and wrong actions in response to that anger emotion and then you've got trouble then you've sinned you you've gone into sin because you don't want to give the devil an opportunity wow i don't know about you but there's enough uh, attack from the enemy to not give him opportunity i mean 
I mean, you don't want thieves to have an opportunity. You lock your doors or you don't keep your wallet out on the porch. You know, you don't keep your jewelry on the mailbox. You know, you lock things up. Don't give the thief an opportunity and don't give the devil an opportunity. And if you're angry and you respond wrong in anger, that's what you do. Uh, you give the devil an opportunity and we sure don't need that. So that's what that picture of the believer is, is they don't respond wrongly to anger. The seventh one is it it's, has to do with uh, put away stealing and put on giving. Uh, it says here, who, who, he who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with one who has need. You know, the believer, we don't steal, and I, I'm sure that's not a temptation a lot of people, even though for some it is. You know, well, that's just small, and they steal that or take that. But uh, the deal is to work with your hands, to have to, to labor and to, and to work hard. Of course, it's the Lord who gives us strength to work, but we're to work and labor, not take from somebody else that's done the work, and we take advantage by stealing something from them. And, and it says, why? So we can have something to give to those who are in need. We have the opportunity to minister to other people through our wealth. You know, we may be able to lend them something, give them something, let them borrow some money, let them uh, use a vehicle, let them do something. You know, we can use what God's blessed us with to bless others. That's how the artist would draw that. The eighth one is it's uh, take away or take off unwholesome words and put on words that edify. Uh, listen to verse 29. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will be give grace to those who hear. Don't you love that verse? I mean, we don't want to speak unwholesome words. That's, that's rotten words. Words that destroy, words that hurt, words that put down, words that, that, that aren't edifying, words that are uh, not good words to say in any setting. So what, what do we do? Well, we do just the opposite. We replace our words from when we were lost and had unwholesome words to good words, words that edify, uh, build up, make people feel better. That doesn't mean that we don't correct them and tell them the truth. That's not what it's saying, but we edify people. Even by telling them the truth of the gospel or, or showing them a sin, it still can be edification. If we do it in the right attitude and with the right spirit, but we need to edify others. And it says, according to the need of the moment. Well, you ever had somebody speak to you a word at that moment when you just needed it or a card you got in the, in the mail from an encourager in the church, open up that card and read it and boy, it, it lifted you up. It, it, it made your day. It, it just uh, uh, blessed your heart, uh, whether it was in a card or words directly uh, that you heard from somebody that just said, man, I don't know if they know it, but that word at that moment just blessed my heart. And so that's what we need to do. We, we need to speak those words. It says, and there'll be grace to the hearer. Oh, well, don't you love when people show you grace? Maybe you messed up, maybe not where you're supposed to be, but they showed you grace. It'll be okay. It's all right. I've made that same mistake. You forgot it. Hey, I forget a lot of things. Boy, don't you love words of grace instead of words of judgment? Uh, that's what we need to do. And why? Because verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God who you were sealed by, by, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. We grieve the Spirit when we say all these unkind words and unwholesome words. But boy, we don't grieve him when we speak the words of edification. And he seals us to the, for the day of redemption. He's done all that for, for us. We shouldn't grieve him with these kind of bad words. But let's, let's bless our brothers and sisters. Let's find opportunities for those particular moments when they need a word, an encouraging word. Maybe they've got a lost job. Maybe they're going through a difficult moment. Uplift them with some words, with a card, with a call, with, with a word of encouragement. What a difference that makes, because that's what a believer looks like. And if an artist is going to draw a believer, they would definitely take away the unwholesome words and they'd put in those words of grace. And then the ninth one is take away bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander. 
He goes to look at verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Oh, bitterness, it's that stuff that you just let build up and build up and build up. You know, you just let it go. Just forgive and drop it because that bitterness is like the word says, it's bitter. That's nasty. You know, we don't like anything bitter in our mouth. And so get rid of those things that, that, that you've let just build up like poison that you've let fester inside you, some offense or something. And, and wrath has to do with anger. I mean, just, just long-standing resentment. I mean, it's just built up so long with you, now you want wrath. That's even greater than anger. And clamor, that's an uncontrolled outburst. And of course, you know what slander is. That's, now you're going to defame somebody because you're so upset with them. And, uh, and malice, that just has to do with evil. It just causes us to go from one step to another. When we start walking away from what we're supposed to do, it just one step worse and worse and worse. And so that's a believer. They just let those things get away from you. You got to put away all of that. You know, if you've got something to get somebody, just let it go. And, and don't let the anger keep building up more and more and more. And then the resentment, and then you're in a, in a bad place. The 10th thing is to put on kindness and tender heartedness. In verse 32, be kind to one another, tender hearted. Well, I don't know what could bless somebody better than just being kind. You know, the word kind there in the Greek, it's a Greek word that really translates, can literally be translated, what is suitable for the need. What is suitable for the need. What's that person's need? Find some words or actions that are suitable for that need. Say, well, they need help uh, with uh, a project at their house. That's the need that'll be kind. You know, they need a word of encouragement. Well, that's that's the kindness that they need. Well, they need a meal because they've been, uh, they're relatives in the hospital, and that's the kindness. It's suitable for the need. So find a, a need and find something that they need that's suitable for the moment that they're in. That's being kind and tender hearted. That goes for itself. Remember, we started this. It said, don't have a calloused heart. Don't be callous, it was saying. Well, that's just the opposite of tender hearted. It's hard hearted, you know, and I'm not saying you have to weep and cry over everything, but your heart is sensitive to other people, you know, and you know people that are very tender hearted that, you know, they, they pick up a need on you have that you have and they ask about your, what's going on or, hey, that issue you've been going with. And they're tender hearted to your issue because they're sensitive. Maybe they've been through it and they know how it feels or or whatever, but they're, they're not hard-hearted. We, we don't need to be hard-hearted. We need to be sensitive to others. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit tries to tell us something we're doing wrong, always have a tender heart to God and to others. And then the last thing is put on forgiveness. Put on forgiveness. Boy, if anything demonstrated, Christ was his forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Boy, he demonstrated that from the cross. And for the Christian, boy, that's one of the hardest things to do. But it's to be Christ-like and to finish up that portrait, to render the portrait of a believer. That's what we're going to end up with is put on that forgiveness. Boy, doesn't that look pretty on people? Doesn't that make the artist's paintbrush just come alive when he finishes up that picture of a believer? That a believer is a forgiver. I've heard it been summarized that a believer is a giver and a forgiver, <laughs> characterized by being giving and forgiving. And so we just got to let it go. And it says there, not only forgive, forgive each other, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. I don't know if I can do it. Well, he did it for you. He said, I don't know if I can do it for them. Well, find out how he did it for you and do it for them. Pass that forgiveness on the way he did for us. And he did it lovingly, and he did it sacrificially, and he did it completely. And he wiped our sins away. And so because he's forgiven us so much, we can forgive others. Because compared to how much he forgave us, what anybody would ever do to us would not compare to what our offenses were to God. And he wiped it clean. And what a great feeling it was for us to be on that receiving end 
it'll be a great feeling for you to be on the giving end as well, that you can demonstrate Christ's love that way. So there's our portrait. Paul, we can see, kind of got out the artist's paintbrush in that little small passages that we read to paint that beautiful picture. And that's what we want others to see in us. If they said, hey, what'd that guy look like? What'd that lady look like? Give me a description. Would they paint that picture of us? I said, here's what they look like. Let me give you these 11 characteristics that I saw in that person. I only met them once, but these are some things that I saw in their life. That's what we want others to see in us. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for giving us this passage, Lord God, where we can see these characteristics, these things that we need to put off and put on so that we can be more like you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can't do it on ourselves. Lord, we need you. The only thing good in us is you. And all these things demonstrate that we're good is, is because of you in us. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. May these words, uh, God, uh, go down deep in our hearts and make those changes in us that we will be more of a representative of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, we're glad you joined in. Uh, just a couple of announcements. We announced it Sunday that our marriage retreat, put it on your calendar, uh, be in the Hill Country, September the 30th through October the 2nd at the Wild Ranch in Kerrville. We'll be giving you more details. We'll be giving out brochures, but we want to tell you now so you can mark your calendars for this great marriage retreat to make this investment in your marriage. Also, our kids' clothing pantry will be at the Magnolia campus this Saturday. Uh, from 10 to 1. Uh, of course, everybody, both campuses are welcome to come or invite people. We usually have people from the spring area that knows about it that come to Magnolia. Magnolia can go to spring, but it's open. Uh, so be spreading the word for anybody you know that can use It's summer clothes, uh, little swimsuits and all the little kids clothes that are for summer will be available. And so we want to minister to our community. So invite people, spread the word on Facebook, and let's get the word out so we can minister to a lot of people. If you want to help, Friday is setup time from 10 a.m. to 5. So you say, hey, I'd like to help. You can also help if you want to the, the day of. Uh, but, you know, we need uh, some setup time help. And so anytime between 10 and 5, you want to come give an hour, two hours, or that whole time, whatever you want to do, it would be appreciated for that setup time. Also, we're going to have the Lord's Supper this Sunday at both campuses, so it's always a great time when we remember the Lord. Of course, we remember the Lord. We should remember him all the time, but it's always a great occasion when we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, so put that down as well. Uh, just uh, want to tell you I love you. I appreciate you. Gosh, we were talking about all the things of that, of what we discussed. We, uh, it is a blessing when we hear from you encouraging words and uplifting words and, and your prayers for us as, as the pastors and leaders of the church, it means so much to us. You'll never know um, because those words of encouragement really help and we appreciate those, those words and, uh, and your prayers uh, as you pray for your pastors and your leaders. And uh, I just thank God for you and, and for that. So anyway, I love you, pray for you, and God bless you until we see each other again.